Welcome back to Enzymes, Biological Catalysts. This time, we will see how much enzymes accelerate the rate of reaction. To get the most out of the videos, I recommend that you watch them in order. This is a reminder that this presentation is Dr. Johnson's intellectual property. It is interesting to consider the magnitude of the rate enhancement that enzymes can cause compared to no catalyst at all. If we divide the rate of the catalyzed reaction by the rate of the non-catalyzed reaction, we get the value for the rate enhancement. Notice that the resulting values are huge. There's a wide range of rate enhancements. Biochemists and biological chemists are fascinated by the really large rate enhancements. They want to know why and how these occur. Rate enhancement is necessary to sustain life. Some non-catalyzed reactions are otherwise far too slow. Let's look at an illustration of this on the next slide. As an example, let's look at the rate enhancement by the enzyme acetylcholinesterase, which catalyzes the hydrolysis of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. The non-catalyzed neutral rate of hydrolysis of acetylcholine is 7.2 times 10 to the minus 9 per second at 25 degrees Celsius. The rate of the reaction when catalyzed by acetylcholinesterase is 1.17 times 10 to the 4 per second. This means that the rate enhancement is 1.6 times 10 to the 12. Another way to look at this is to consider the time required for a single reaction. In this case, the non-catalyzed reaction takes 1.38 times 10 to the 8 seconds, almost four and a half years, just for a single reaction to occur, while the enzyme-catalyzed reaction takes just a fraction of a second at 8.54 times 10 to the minus 5 seconds. Enzyme reactions occur in the active site of the enzyme. This is where catalytic residues and other amino acids that help with substrate recognition are located. The substrate is bound in the active site by many weak intramolecular forces. Holding the substrate close to the reacting groups in the active site has the effect of increasing the relative concentrations of the reactants, so the reaction is faster. The substrate and the enzyme both undergo conformational change in order to position the substrate and the catalytic active site residues for optimal reaction and stabilization of the transition state. This is sometimes referred to as orbital steering. In some cases, this means that other molecules, such as water, must be excluded. In fact, Koshland realized that in order to allow the phosphate of ATP to be transferred to glucose, Instead of being cleaved by water, the reaction requires shielding from solvent. He proposed that the enzyme, hexokinase, would undergo induced fit to accomplish this. It wasn't until the crystal structures were solved in the late 1970s that he was shown to be correct. The structures shown here are more recent structures solved after the amino acid sequence of the enzyme was known. There are also some mechanistic ways that enzymes use to cause rate enhancement. These include improving the nucleophilicity of active site residues, the electrophilicity of substrates, and the leaving group ability of substrate groups. Next time, we'll have a look at the reactive groups in enzymes.